Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daisy. For today's video, I am going to be reading my subscribers' scary stories. So if you're interested, grab your snacks, grab your kawika, and let's get straight into it. So now let's begin with story number one. Hi Daisy, I want to tell you a story my dad told me about Iletusa. He described them as being a witch that had the ability to turn into an owl. My dad is from Mexico, and in their pueblo, there was a lady who everyone knew to be a witch. They suspected that she could turn into a lechuza, but nobody had proof. One night, my grandpa was outside and saw an owl on top of the water tower of their pueblo. He ignored it at first, but it kept getting closer to him, and he said he felt a negative energy coming from it. He grabbed his gun and shot at it, but it hit the owl's foot and it flew away. The next day, he heard from someone in the pueblo that the witch was hurt, so he went to go see for himself. And sure enough, he saw the witch, and she had her foot wrapped in bandages, the same foot that my grandpa had shot the owl. I have another story that my cousin told me about her experience with a lechuza. I have to mention that the houses in this pueblo were very spread out and separated by long, wide dirt paths. She lived in the same part of Mexico as my dad, but a pueblo over from him. She would stay out with her friends really late into the night, and her grandmother didn't like that. Every night that she was coming home, her grandmother would send her two older boy cousins to go get her and bring her back inside the house. Her older cousins would usually take advantage of their signs and hit her all while they dragged her back home. One night, as she was walking home, she could already see her cousins at the end of the block waiting for her. She said, suddenly, a lechuza flew down and stood in between them, blocking her path. She was scared, so she just rose there. One of her cousins ran back to go get their grandmother, while the other one stood frozen. Her grandmother came out of the house and stood in the street and started hitting her cane on the ground, and the lechuza just flew away. That night, while my cousin was laying in bed, she was looking out of her window, and she saw the lechuza standing on a nearby tree. She tried to ignore it and eventually fell asleep. Well, that night, she had slept with her window open because it was really hot out. And in the middle of the night, she woke up, trying to catch her breath because she felt like there was something over her face, suffocating her. She couldn't see anything, just black. She screamed for her grandmother and that's when she heard her door open and her grandmother pull something off of her and then close the window. Her grandmother sat her up and tried to calm her down while using a blanket to wipe her face. She went back to sleep with her grandmother that time, but in the morning when she checked, there were scratches all over her face with some dried blood. Her grandmother told her that when she came into her room, she saw a lechuza over her face scratching her with its nails. She pulled it off of her and threw it out of the window and immediately closed it. She didn't tell her at that moment since she just wanted to calm her down and be able to go back to sleep. Thank you for reading these stories from my family members, even if they don't make it into a video. Just wanted to share some spooky stories with you. Thank you so much for writing in, writing in your stories. And not only did you have one Lechuza story, you had two Lechuza stories. And that last story, it just seemed like that Bruja really had it out for your cousin, your prima. It could have attacked your other guy cousins, but it really had it out for her. So I'm very curious, why did it seem like a personal attack? But now you just have me thinking, like, ¿qué tenía con ella, you know? But thank you so much for writing in. If you have any more stories, any lechuza stories or any paranormal stories, please send them in if you would like. But thank you so much. Now let's move on to the second story. Hey girlie, my name is Luz. This story is about a lechuza experience that happened to my grandma. Last year on January 10, my grandma came to visit us. During her visit, my mom noticed that my grandma looked very pale and weak. So she asked her if she was feeling okay. And my grandma replied with, No, ya tengo casi una semana que me siento mal. 
y que me levantan a medianoche. My mom told her that she should have a cleanse at her house. But my grandma told her that she had already done that. So my mom offered for her to stay at our house for a while to see if that would change the fact that she couldn't sleep at night. My grandma seemed kind of hesitant but then later agreed to stay. Literally that same day, my grandma went to her house and packed a bag of clothes to bring to my house. Fast forward to a week later to my grandma staying at my house, everything was going fine. She even said that she was feeling better and she could actually sleep throughout the night. Well, on January 23rd, around 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., both my grandma and I were asleep, but I heard my grandma moaning in her sleep. I'm a light sleeper, lol. So I sat up from my bed and to try to wake her up. But once I was about to call her, she suddenly sat up real quick and started crying. She said something very chilling. These were her exact words. Mija, no me dejan dormir. Apenas me había quedado dormida y sentí que se me subieron encima. When I tell you I got the chills, I literally had goosebumps all over my body. The next day at around 9 p.m., my family and I were outside while my dad was making carne asada. We were all sitting down when suddenly I heard my brother say that there was a big white bird on my neighbor's tree looking at us. My mom looked a little closer and when she came back, she told us that it was a lechuza. But we ignored it and continued talking. About an hour and a half later, the lechuza was still there and it was still looking towards us. My mom quickly called my aunt, who was inside our house, to come see the lechuza that had been looking towards us for a while now. My aunt told my mom that it's known that lechuzas are brujas. My mom quickly called her friend Glory, who was a psychic, to tell her about this and asked if she could come over the next day. The next day, Glory came over and as soon as she walked into my house, she sensed some bad energy. My grandma and Glory sat at our table and started the tarot reading. What she told us was unbelievable. She told us that someone who just became part of the family wanted to hurt my grandma. We thought hard to see who it could be. And it's crazy because my uncle Emmanuel, which is my grandma's son, had recently gotten into a relationship with the girl he cheated on his girlfriend with. And it turns out my grandma didn't like my uncle's new girl and had been trying to talk him out of the relationship. Now, my grandma quickly called him and told them about what Glory told her, but he said she was overthinking. My grandma then proceeded to ask my aunt for my uncle's news girl's phone number. My grandma ended up calling her and confronting her about it. She said this, Ya sé lo que me estás haciendo y quiero que sepas que por más que intentes lastimarme, no me vas a lastimar. Get him, grandma. Get her. Get her. What's funny is that after that call, we never knew or heard about her. <gasps> That's it. I hope this wasn't too much to read if you do read this. I hope you have an amazing day. Luz, Luz, first of all, girl, thank you so much for giving us all the tea. Like, it really put us in perspective of a lot of things, of why she was feeling, like, everything. It just... <laughs> chef's kiss girlfriend thank you so much for giving us all the juicy details so we can really fully see what was going on with your grandma and your uncle's denial is something very common when people are being worked on so she she was probably even working on your uncle and your grandma too unfortunately but i'm glad that your grandma stood her ground Tell that to your grandma. I'm glad that your grandma stood her ground and said, uh-uh, you're not messing with me. And in these moments when someone's trying to do that to you, stand your ground and be like, uh-uh, no, you're not. No, you're not. I'm not going to be a victim of your little juego, okay? Wow, this one really got me heated. <laughs> Ooh, I think me that PTSD from the past. But again, thank you so much, Luz, for sharing all the juicy details. Chef's kiss. 
So now let's move on to our next story. Hello, Bonita. My name is Grace, and I've been watching your videos since I was pregnant with my baby boy about a year ago and got hooked immediately. I'm a believer of the spooky and the paranormal, and your channel delivers that. I just love getting that notification when you upload. Thank you so much, Grace, for your kind words, your support, you writing in. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. I appreciate everyone's support. It really means a lot for me, my family. Like, it, it really does. But, okay, mira, I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> I'd like to share a long but intense story to you and your subscribers that not me, but my mother and her family experienced. Now, my grandma is the oldest of many siblings, but there was a baby before she was born who would have been her older brother. My grandmother was born in the 50s, so witchcraft and witches were very common, especially in the neighborhood they lived in that looked something like this. You cannot tell me that does not look creepy. But a year before my grandma was born, my great-grandparents had a newborn boy who was about two to three months old. Assuming he was snatched while they slept one night, it wasn't until the next morning my grandparents woke up and did not see him next to them. When they opened the front door, they found his lifeless body laying behind some plants. He was very pale and had bloody bite marks around his body. Taking him to the hospital, he was pronounced dead upon arrival. And as doctors checked him, they found almost no blood detected in his system. My great-grandfather knew instantly it was a bruja that had taken his little one. Many years go by, but my great-grandfather's hate for brujas kept growing and growing as many babies and children kept wounding up dead in the neighborhood. Many years after my mom was born, they were having a family get-together at my great-grandparents' house. My mom was about six or seven, and her younger brother, my uncle, was about five. They have a very large family, and while everyone was having a good time, they noticed a flaring ball of light floating very high above them. It was known that when witches were not in their physical form, they would appear as these balls of light floating through the air. My great-grandfather acted quickly because he knew exactly what it was, and so he knew of a ritual to bring the bruja down to capture her. He had to gather three males with the name of Juan, say loud prayers and a red rag in his hand while tying it in knots. My uncle was one of the Juans along with two other of my cousins. Crazy enough, my great-grandfather's ritual was working. The ball of light was actually coming closer down to them. As he was getting a rope ready to capture her, and as she got closer and closer, my uncle and the other two boys freaked out and ran away screaming and crying. Understandable since these kids were from 5 to 8 years old. But my great-grandfather was very angry when this happened as the ball of light got further and farther away again. She ended up getting away. It was known around the neighborhood that sometime after that happened, a man who lived nearby did end up capturing one. Some say that he kept her captive until police arrived at the scene and took her away and others say that he actually ended up burning the bruja, setting her on fire. This was unclear, but if it wasn't for my mom and grandma personally witnessing the ritual my great-grandfather performed, it would have been hard to believe. Oh my goodness, your poor great-grandfather, my heart breaks for him because he truly... Ay no, pobrecito. You can just tell that he needed justice in his eyes. He was like, uh-uh, like I need to do something about my son's death. But I hope he was able to come to terms. Mira, I'm already crying. <laughs> Mira, ya, me, ya quiero llorar. I know. No, but I hope he did come to terms with what happened with his son, your it would have been your uncle since it's your oh my god you know how it's complicated but wow i know pobrecito de tu great grandpa like i can just imagine like his hurt his pain his anger 
it's just so weird that the baby was no blood detected it just gave me like it gave me a thought of vampires or the chupacabra but no i do believe what you know it was i mean it just seems to be very likely of a bruja porque pues it's known that they like to have a baby to sacrifice of a, for a ritual which is really disgusting wow thank you for sharing that story that was very intense gracie so grace i mean i, I want to say gracie or grace but grace <laughs> thank you so much for writing in your story these stories were really good you guys today's video mira me encantó you guys had me wanting more bruja stories so if you guys have any stories write them in because i love to hear them so that was it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed these stories i love them but if you guys have any stories that you would like for me to share please send them in at daisyspooks at gmail.com and i hope to read them all very soon but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys all in my next one bye